Please welcome Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> I did. We'll go know? back to our traditional kiss after the pandemic <laughs> is behind us. How are you? I'm great, man. Hey, congratulations, because I heard that your alma mater was Southern Illinois SIU. University. Yes, SIU, yes. Is uh, giving you an honorary doctorate. How about that? And <laughs> you will be a doctor. <laughs> Dr. Bob. <laughs> they ran out of people. <laughs> I don't know if it's a doctorate. It might just be like a driver's passing like certificate. No, no. You it, are allowed to drive in Carbondale. If it isn't a doctorate, don't go. That's uh, what I would say. I, it's an honorary degree, and I already have a degree from SIU. Oh. But because uh, a real one that I earned by going <laughs> to class. But I think it's better to get the one that you didn't go to any classes for. It's your, it's cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper and somehow it's like just magical. It's like a, it's like a, just a magical thing from heaven that fell on you. you and know, you can write Docker on forms now, legally. That's right, that's what I want to do. Just like wait. Bill Cosby <laughs> did, you know? Boy, no, okay. <laughs> now I don't want it. Now you made, you ruined that for me. So uh, well, I'm gonna go. Didn't you go? Didn't you go to college? When I you went like to a, a lot of college. young boy or something. I was pretty young. I was 16 when 16. I went to college. Does that make you think I'm smart? Yes. <laughs> You're like Doogie Odenkirk. Yes. <laughs> I I was just uh, tired of high school. And you I'd had enough. To, you were able to transfer right to college. Yeah. I mean, it was really weird. I I just think I was a normal student. I read a lot. I mm -hmm. like to read, and uh, I think that kind of kicked me ahead of everyone else. And then I just asked one day when I was a junior in high school, I said, how many credits do I have? I went to the office and they said, well, you'll have 16 and that's all you need. And I go, oh, can I leave? And they were like, yeah. And you did. <laughs> and I just left. <laughs> I didn't go to graduation and they never included me in any, it was like I disappeared. <laughs> I, I disappeared from high school. I didn't graduate. And then and, when you're a boy. And then I went to, I was so young that I felt like I'd be very awkward at any college. So I went to a local college, gotcha. College of DuPage. Oh. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. I spent a year there, I had a blast. And then I went to Marquette. Oh. Because I thought my father had gone there. What? Yes, I didn't know because, I mean, that'll tell you a little about my life yeah. right there. I had heard a rumor that he went there. I didn't. And so I thought I should go there. And, uh, and then that was all right for a year. And then I somehow went to Southern. I loved Southern Illinois University. It was just great. <laughs> it's a beautiful part of the country if you've ever been there. And it's very far south from Chicago. And it's just great. And I had a blast there. And I did comedy there. What did you do, like a radio? I did right? a radio show. College which, radio, yeah. College radio is where I started with you. Too. Yeah, I started in college radio too, yeah. And uh, it's a great safe place to perform and nobody can see you. Yeah, <laughs> not only nobody can see you, but in my case, no one was listening oh, at all. Oh, me too. Yeah. Me too. Do you and remember? That was great. What would you do? Like, would you do sketches <laughs> we did a, or what? Uh, I had a partner named Tim Thomas. He was an early version of David Cross. Okay. And. Uh, we did a, a comedy show once a week for four hours with sketches and improvised characters. Four it was hours. called the Primetime Special. Wow. And it was on Thursday nights at midnight. Uh huh. So, not primetime. <laughs> right. And also not special. <laughs> and uh, we were kind of inspired by our heroes, which were um, the Credibility Gap, a great comedy group from uh, Pasadena that featured as one of its members Michael McKeon, who then played Chuck. Yeah. Better Call Saul. He played my older brother many yeah. years later. Wow, that's so. That's crazy. And that's a, a complete coincidence. It's all a big circle. It and, really? uh, but he inspired me, and uh, and then years later we got to work together. Now your son is in college now. How old yeah, is your my son? My son now? Nate, who worked here. Yeah. Thank you for that. I got him out of the house. Yeah, he's a smart kid. <laughs> yeah. He's a smart kid. Yeah. And uh, he's 21 now. He's 21 years old. So he can do whatever he oh, wants. Did, you hit, did he let you have a party for him at his 21st <laughs> birthday? Well, or? it's weird, man. He uh, didn't care. Oh, really? Because he had a fake ID for oh. so many years. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it was nothing. <laughs> That's what happened to me. As I grew up in Las Vegas, and you have to have a fake ID. It's like it's actually the law. Well, it, w yeah. <laughs> it won't help you anymore in Vegas because we actually met him in Vegas a few weeks after he turned 21. Oh, you did? Yeah, he was there for a debate tournament because he's a coach, and we were there to enjoy Vegas. And uh, he had a couple friends with him, and we were sitting there at the roulette table, because you want to teach your kids how to manage money. You know? <laughs> and what better way than roulette? <laughs> Invest your money in roulette, kids. <laughs> and, the, and the dealer, are they dealers? What are they? Mm, they're the, spinners, yeah, spinners. I guess. I don't know. The spinner yeah. asked for the kids' IDs, because they're smart. And, uh, and every, they run, except one of the friends the ID doesn't work. It's not working. It's working. Oh, well, let's take it over to the security desk. It's not working. It's not working. So they have us go through this rigmarole, and after this third person had tested it five times, the kid leans over to me and goes, it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> I go, yeah, well, Good. You're tell an us that at the start. To a crime. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break. When we come All back... Right. Uh, season five of yeah, Better Call let's Saul. Talk about, yeah. It is back on the air, the second to final season. Bob Odenkirk is with us. We will be right back. Everything good? Yeah. I'm sort of celebrating, actually. Celebrating what? I just realized I have all pro bono clients tomorrow, all day. No Mesa Verde. Well, all right. To justice. <laughs> that is Bob Odenkirk on Better Call Saul, using his fake ID again. <laughs> so, Vince Gilligan, the creator of Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, announced that this is the second to last season. Next season will be the last season. Yeah. And whereas most shows, you kind of wonder uh, what will happen. I mean, theoretically, we know what will we happen. We know, but not really. But not really. Because they always want to throw a curve at you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that, you know, we've already shot one scene that took place during the time period of Breaking Bad. It was in season four of Better Call Saul, episode five, if you're watching on Netflix, you'll see a scene that takes place during the Breaking Bad time period. So we'll, we'll get there, and we're very close. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this season on Better Call Saul, which just started, is we'll see Dean Norris and Stephen Michael Quezada. Great. Uh, so old chums from Breaking Bad are coming back, more people coming back into the world. And then I think they're going to tell the story of what happens after the Breaking Bad season. Interesting. Which and is, uh, is there know, any chance that at the end of Better Call Saul, you will go even fur further back in time, yes. maybe to like, like Jimmy in sixth grade <laughs> or something like that. Well, they were talking about a prenatal version <laughs> of the show. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>